I was hiking in an off-trail pine forest in Colorado. I was truly off-trail. There were no previously beaten paths for me to tramp down. So, you can imagine my surprise when a stone came sailing out of the air and smacked into the nearby tree right next to me. I called out to whoever was throwing the stones, and there were people in line of fire. Not more than a few moments later, another rock, the size of my fist, came whizzing right by my face. Maybe they were hard of hearing, or they just couldn't hear me, or so I thought. Somebody with a really good arm on them could throw further than they could hear. I yelled as loud as possible and screamed, stop throwing rocks. Then came another one. Only this one hurt me on the upper thigh. I danced and cussed. I waited for another rock to come flying. I got a pretty good idea of what part of the opposite hillside these rocks were coming from. I had binoculars on me and began to sweep the area to see who could have been throwing them. If I had been panning any faster, I probably would have missed because the colors blended in with the woodland so seamlessly. Since I was looking at it through binoculars, I almost thought it was somebody in a Halloween costume. But there was something about the way the drool was running from the chin that convinced me that what I was seeing was indeed real. Take your average man that's built like a brute. Add a lot of hair and fur covering, but all the extremities, such as hands and feet, give it the mouth full of teeth in such bad disarray and make it look like an angry, angry dog. That's the best way I can describe what I was seeing. At first, the word Bigfoot crossed my mind. But last I checked, Bigfoots don't look like giant dogs on two legs. I wasn't really sure what to think. In my heightened state, I felt like whatever this was, it was looking straight into my eyes. Without breaking its glare, it stooped down, picked up another large rock, and threw it with nearly calculated precision. If it could aim like that from a distance, I didn't want to find out how good its arm was up close. I fled, and I made sure I had everything when I left that forest. It did not follow me, thankfully, which led me to believe that I had incited some sort of bizarre territorial behavior. Maybe I was nearing a den or something. Either way, it was bad news, and I clearly wasn't welcome. So, I've never gone back. As far as what exactly I dealt with that day, well, I'm not quite sure. Maybe you can figure it out for me. I'm hoping you might be able to explain to me what the hell I saw last night. I was out for a run, or at least validate for me that I'm not stone cold crazy. Since I go for a run most evenings, or very early in the morning, and have used the same route for years now, but this is the first time and like anything this has ever happened, and to be honest with you, I'm still in the process of trying to digest it. I live up in Maine, and there are plenty of beautiful running tracks around here. You have to be careful of specific wildlife, but the closest encounter I have ever had to something like this was a moose who just refused to get out of the way in the road. So you can believe me when I say this has me terrified. I'm also a strong, firm person of science, and had I not seen this thing with my own eyes, there would have been no way in hell I would have ever thought it possible. I hadn't been drinking. I've never taken drugs. I was sober. Yet, stood in my path, blocking my way as that moose had done, was a creature that looked like a man, but also part wolf or dog. It was as tall as you and I, but very, very broad. It reminded me of a linebacker. If the creature had been purely human, I would have thought possible that it could have been the rock. 
so you get the point of it being large and very, very muscular. To the point to where I could see its muscles rippling through its fur. There was no possible way this was somebody playing a joke, or in a costume. The details were just far too vivid. You see, not only was it covered in a sort of reddish fur, the legs were bowed at the knee, like a dog's hind limbs. No human could pull that off. The arms were more human-like, except for being covered in thick hair, of course. But they hung from the side and reached sort of thigh length. Its hands were clenched, so I was unable to ascertain whether it had actual hands or paws. It had a very thick muscular neck, and the head reminded me of kind of like a reddish German shepherd with more pointier ears and a bit longer snout. Literally, only seeing the head, you'd mistake it for nothing more than just a very large dog. But as I slowed down, I came up close to it, somehow willing it to just step out so I could race home. Once it realized my presence, it quickly began following me, picking up its pace to try and chase after me. Honestly, something that large could have easily grabbed me and taken me down like an innocent gazelle being chased like a lion. Why it didn't get to me, I don't know, but I made it back in record time. Thank goodness for all those runs. Had I not had such strong legs, I probably would have been a goner. Now that I have written this down and sent it to you, it sounds like it might have been a dream, but it was not. Has anybody else experienced anything like this up in the main area? And could you help me find out exactly what it is I saw that day, whatever animal this could have been? I was camping out in Alaska, but at the time, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. It was a strong feeling that came over me. It only got stronger. In fact, that first night, I barely slept at all. I was expecting someone or something to come barreling into my tent and make a move on my life, or try and rob me, actually. I remember laying there with my eyes open in the darkness, feeling inexplicable dread. The fear visit never came to pass, but I was convinced that whatever was out there, it was only biding time. I couldn't take it anymore. My outing that was supposed to relieve stress at the time was causing more than it was worth. So, I packed up and headed back to my car, which was a good half a mile walk. I brought my revolver with me and kept it out, just in case I ran into any loose vagabonds trying to take me down, or anybody that wouldn't settle for me just leaving. After all, you never know when you're out in the wild. My car was at the bottom of a hill, and I was coming down a slope. Now, on the opposite side of my car, there was something that was just as far away from my car on their side as I was on mine. It was tall enough to announce that, even from a distance, it clearly wasn't human, and I could tell it was bad news. The way it carried itself reminded me of a stalking hunter, and my inner instincts told me that it had to have been some sort of animal that had been watching me since I arrived. Its body, covered in a mix of brown and gray fur, which made me think it was older for some reason. It eyed me with a gaze as intense as you can imagine. And when I moved for the car, it also did. I had to race. My car was the finish line. It hurried, but I was burdened with my camping gear. So it would be the faster of the two of us. While only about 45 seconds from my car, while I was over one minute away, I took the chance on my sportsmanship, raising my revolver and taking a couple shots. There was a half second delay between the hammer hitting and this thing staggering back a few steps. But it regained itself and it kept coming quicker. Firing a second time, 
and a plume of dirt next to its feet told me that my aim was clearly off. However, if it were cunning, it would have hid behind my car. After shot number three, it appeared that I hit it in the shoulder. It let out a sharp cry of pain that seemed to create this inhuman scream. And then it gave me a look that told me it was pissed. I knew I probably just signed my death certificate right there. However, after taking a fourth shot, I didn't waste any time. I tried to shoot it dead in the face, but I somehow missed. This thing turned around, and I think was heading back into the woods towards my direction. I had no idea what it was planning. Maybe it was going to flank me. Maybe it was going to entrap me. As soon as I got close to my car, and shortly after this thing disappeared back into the woods, I began hearing more of these strange, bizarre cry howls, as I call them, coming from multiple spots around me in the woods. That's when I realized I was deep in trouble. There wasn't just one. There must have been a pack of these things, or multiples, and all I had seen was the one. They were planning an attack, and probably going to move in quick. All I can say was I was in my car and had it started faster than ever. As I was pulling away quickly, multiple of them stepped out of the woods and began chasing my car, once far bigger than the one I saw. It was a terrifying experience, but they let me go. Even though they seemed like they possessed the power to chase down my car, rip open the door, and tear me limb from limb, I was somehow spared, and I'm lucky enough to be able to be writing it to you. That's my story out in the Alaskan wilderness. What I encountered that day will never be forgotten. One day, I was driving home from work when I saw something in the road not too far in front of me. Since I have to commute on some backcountry roads, it isn't unusual to come across an animal who thinks they have the right to just sit there whilst I either attempt to maneuver around or sit, honking my horn. I've seen it all. Peasants, foxes, deer, even a badger one time. Whatever this thing was, was pretty big, and I could tell it was going to need to move, as I wouldn't be able to drive past it without getting myself stuck. I am also an avid animal lover, so there is no way I would just run it over. As I was approaching it, it showed zero interest in moving. At this point, though, I still can't make out what sort of creature it is, and I could see from the angle that it is facing the other way. I remember thinking that if for some reason it couldn't hear very well, then it might have not sensed I was coming. I put my hand on the horn and beeped a good four or five times. Usually, if it's a deer... It'll freak out and scare it off. However, I have never seen a reaction like this. It stood up fully on two legs and turned to face me. It was terrifying. Only it wasn't a person. It appeared to be a large, when I say large, I mean very large, hairy dog. Was it a person? No. Could it have been somebody celebrating Halloween early? No. It was far too large. But it was very thin, covered in very dark short hair, reminding me somewhat of a Doberman pincher in the head. I was in so much shock, I didn't even put my foot on the brake. If I hadn't suddenly moved, I would have knocked it over. Some sort of survival instinct must have struck it, as though just before I was about to hit it with my car, it clearly vanished. I don't mean disappeared into thin air. I meant it turned and ran off into the thicket so quickly, I barely had time to even notice it. If I would have blinked, I don't even think I would have seen it. I just drove home after that, in shock the entire way. Now, I look out for it every time I go that way but I've never seen it again. 
I've told a few friends and even a coworker that I believe I saw an undiscovered species of dog.